हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू योर ओन चैनल फूड टेक नेटवर्क माय नेम इज़ अनु शर्मा इन द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द सीरीज दैट वी बिगैन ऑन द प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ फ्रूट एंड फ्रूट प्रोडक्ट्स टुडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ मार्मलेट कैंडीड ग्लेस्ड एंड क्रिस्टलाइज फ्रूट्स एंड विल वाइंड अप टूडेज लेक्चर विद डिस्कशन ऑफ टाइप्स ऑफ पैक्टन सो लेट एस बिगिन विद इट मार्मलेट so just like jam and jelly marmalade to a large extent resembles both these products the only difference is that it has got some shredded pulp or pieces or chunks of fruits added in it so one can say that this is a fruit jelly or jam in which slices of the fruit or its peels are suspended the term is generally used for products made from citrus fruits now we very well know that citrus fruits are like oranges mosambi lemons pomelo etc and in these products shredded peel is used as the suspended material the citrus marmalades can be classified into two products like jelly marmalade and jam marmalade the fpo or fssai's regulations specifications for marmalade is tss has to be 65 degree bricks that is for every 100 g of product 65 g has to be solid the fruit juice content or the fruit pulp content has to be 45% of the overall composition marmalade as i said earlier can be classified into two variants jelly marmalade and jam marmalade and as the name indicates jelly marmalade is prepared from the clarified pectin extract of the juice and jam marmalade is practically made the same way a jam is made now after discussing about marmalade let us talk about candied fruits so a fruit impregnated or dissolved in cane sugar or glucose syrup solution and subsequently drained free of syrup and dried is known as candied fruit so what we do we take fresh fruits and then we dissolve them or put them together with the glucose or sucrose solution and after you know letting them in the solution for some time we take them out drain the sugar solution and let them dry and the product that we get is known as candied fruit the most suitable fruits for candying are amla karonda pineapple cherry papaya apple peels of oranges lemon grapefruit and ginger the fpo specifications for candied fruits are the tss or total soluble solid has to be 75 degree bricks total sugar content has to be up to 70% and reducing sugar that is non sucrose based sugar like glucose fructose has to be 25% because some sort of inversion or conversion of sucrose to glucose and fructose also takes place now the process for making candied fruit is practically similar to that for preserves we know that candied fruits are similar to preserves and conserves that is the way whole fruits or its large chunks are you know uh, preserved for longer times the only difference is that the fruit is impregnated with syrup having a higher percentage of sugar that is 75 degree bricks the syrup left over from the candying process can be used for candying another batch of the same kind of fruit after suitable dilution for sweetening chutneys sauces pickles and even for vinegar making now the second category of fruit products in the form of sugar uh, based shelf life extension is crystallized fruit so candied fruits coated with crystals of sugar either by rolling in finely powdered sugar or by allowing sugar crystals from a dense syrup deposit or crystallize out on their surface is known as crystallized fruits so i hope you understand the definition we first of all make candied fruits and then coat these fruits with the sucrose or like fine particles of sugar or we can also deposit a very concentrated solution which upon drying will crystallize out the particles of sucrose the candied fruits are placed on a wire mesh tray which is placed in a deep vessel cooled syrup at 70% tss is gently poured over the fruit so as to cover it entirely now you must know that while making candied fruit 75 degree bricks was used but while making the crystallized fruits after uh, making the candied fruit 70 uh, degree bricks syrup is used that is lesser than 
the one used for making its precursor that is candied fruits now this whole mass is left undisturbed for 12 to 18 hours during which a thin coating of crystallized sugar is formed the tray is then taken out carefully from the vessel and the surplus syrup is dried off the fruits are then placed in a single layer on wire mesh trays and drained at room temperature or at about 49 degrees celsius in dryers until they are attained they are attaining the desired moisture content the third category in case of hfs products of fruits is glazed fruit so covering of candied fruits which we made at the first step with a thin transparent coating of sugar which imparts them a lustrous beautiful shiny and glossy appearance is known as glazed fruit so cane sugar that is sucrose and water in the ratio 2 ratio 1 for instance if you are taking 100 kg of water then 200 kg of sugar has to be taken these this mixture is first boiled in a steam pan at around 113 to 114 degrees celsius and the scum is removed as it comes up after this the syrup is cooled to 93 degrees celsius and rubbed with a wooden ladle on the side of the pan when granulated sugar is obtained dried candied fruits are passed through this granulated portion of sugar solution one by one by means of a fork or something else and then placed on trays in a warm dry room they may also be dried in a dryer at the same that is 49 degrees celsius for two to three hours when they become crisp and for this is followed by air type packaging so i hope the difference between all these three candied crystallized and glazed fruits is clear to you the precursor for all of them remains the same that is the normal fruit first of all we make the candied version this candied version can be modified into a crystallized or a glazed food version depending on the treatment we give it now after this comes very important topic pectin so we know that for the making of jam marmalade jelly pectin pectin is a very important material but what pectin actually is so it is a naturally occurring water soluble fiber and gelling agent that can be found in most fruits and plants pectin comes in many forms such as powder liquid sheets etc commercial pectin sold in grocery stores and markets is commonly made with extracted pectin from apple or citrus peels now uh, also if i tell you about the biochemistry or the food chemistry based aspects of pectin so it is a polymer a complex polysaccharide whose monomer is galactironic acid so what can we say we can say it is a polygalactironic acid now it has various forms so protopectin is present in hard immature green fruits like green apples or the peels of citrus fruits the second category is the normal pectin as the fruit matures protopectin becomes soluble pectin which is used in making jelly the third category is pectic acid if now the fruit becomes very much ripe like in the overripe condition we get the third form that is pectic acid so another form related to pectic acid is uh, pectinic acid so these all these form vary chemically in the degree of methylation because if we see the structure of pectin we have methoxylated group at one end so the various degree of methyl uh, methoxy group addition leads to different forms of pectin now if we classify pectin we have two different classification products so the first one is high methoxyl pectin and the second one is low methoxyl pectin so the high methoxyl pectin is further divided into two types rapid set so rapid set pectin is often used for jellies that have ingredients suspended inside the gel structure such as chunky marmalades or hot pepper jelly etc on the other hand we have slow set pectin so slet, uh, slow set high methoxy pectin is often used for clear jellies like that made from apricot or grape low methoxy pectin works well in conjunction with locust bean gum and is often used to produce low or no sugar jellies so now you can understand how well the chemical structure of pectin uh, plays a role in gelling so this was all about today's video we discussed about processing of marmalade it's two forms that is jam and jelly marmalade then we moved on to the production of candied fruits crystallized fruits and glazed fruits 
and in the last section we studied about pectin and its types based on methoxy content and uses so i hope you like this video meet you in the next video